Live podcast. This is your host, Lou Mavs. Check out everything you need to know about the show over at musicislivepodcast.com. So, as everyone knows, the new Halloween album is out. If you go over to Rat Style Review, you'll see that we covered all the albums up to the new one. And as far as I'm concerned, I think the new one is the best album of 2021. It would be really cool to have a member of Halloween on the show. Hi, like a shiza. It's a Sasha Gessner. Here I am. Your wishes, you know, it's just fulfilled. And I even have to rub a genie bottle. That's amazing. <laughs> Good. Great. Sasha, guten Tag und willkommen bei Music is Live podcast. Yeah. Hi. Hi there. And, Very good uh, introduction, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, you before know. we begin the questions, I just want to say thank you to Uta Kromri from your management for setting this up. Very nice lady. And uh, cheers to her. So as I was saying... The new Halloween album, the self-titled release, is out now on Nuclear Blast Records. It is my album of the year. You've added such a great wow. dimension to the band, and I am really happy that you're here for me to ask you questions about the new album and about your career. Yeah, that, that's that's very nice of you to say that. But you know, I, I have to say on that, uh, in, on, on um, at this point, um, it's it's a teamwork thing. You know, like the whole like the way everything. Um, happened and the way everything came together and I'm not even talking um, about the band um, itself it's also um, all the people who, who were working with us um, throughout the years it, whether it's if, if it's our life crew or management producers everything you know so to get to this point um, being seven members in a band and having an album like that it was a lot of teamwork you know so there's like not one person responsible for everything I completely understand that. And yes, I meant no disrespect by that. Um, all I meant was from the album that you joined with them from to this point, Rabbit Don't Come Easy. You have probably one of my all time favorite Halloween songs, uh, Open Your Life. And you wrote that. And oh, yeah. when, that's what made me take notice of you was that song. Oh, nice. and I just said, oh, my God, this guy's added new fresh blood to the band. It just sounded amazing. But Let's not talk about past. Let's talk about current. And again, thank you for being on the show. So, and again, remember Halloween's new album out on Nuclear Blast Records right now. Um, first off, congratulations on an amazing record, having the number six record in Sweden, the number three record in Japan, and the first number one record in the career of Halloween in your home country of Germany. Uh, just want to ask you how it feel. How does it feel? Huge accomplishment or just another day at the office for you? <laughs> no, it's 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 really crazy, you know. Because you also have to know we're we're a heavy metal band, and and you know, like being a number one in in your own country, that means something special for you as well, you know. And then also among all the other genres, you know. Um, for I, I think actually when a heavy metal band achieves something like that, that's that's not only for the band and, and not only for the fans, it's it's for the whole genre. I, I just like that we as an like old school heavy metal band um, um, went to the top there. That's that's crazy. And it's, you know, today we got the news, you know, like, like we, we knew it would happen. It, would, it was building up this week, but today was official and, and yeah, it's a big hype now in, in the Halloween camp, you know, because it's it's crazy, you know, and, and just because of what I said, it's it's not only the achievement um, of of the band, it's it's the achievement of, of everyone else who was working with us. And and also because it's the heavy metal genre, which is still like if you compare it to all this hip hop stuff that's going on and pop music and everything reaching a number one in any countries or three or four in other countries it doesn't matter it's it's just great you know and and i'm i'm just i'm just thinking that's that it's great for the whole heavy metal world you know not only for halloween 
I think that's a wonderful answer and I'll take it. That's and and it, you're right. It is great for the genre, but as a fan of the band, I'm just so happy for you guys. I mean, I'm not one that yeah. really <laughs> considers, you know, uh I think validation is good. Don't get me wrong. Um but like I didn't need Halloween to have a number one album for me to say what a great band you guys are. But yeah, I and- think it's amazing that you guys achieved it. So congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you, man. So aside from the obvious, which includes now recording with uh, Michael Kiske and Kai Hansen in the band now, the lineup has been pretty consistent for the last 17 years since uh, Keeper's Legacy. You, Sasha, are a producer, songwriter, and musician. You work with Charlie Bauerfein since your days in Freedom Call. What are some of the changes that you've experienced in terms of technology and recording and how have you adapted to including these techniques in your career? Oh, well, you know, in, in the 2000s, like in the early 2000s, uh, everything went digital, right? So um, and it, it gave a lot of people the possibility to record um, in smaller studios and at home. And of course, for us as a touring band, it was a great addition as well because you, you and, and that's what bands nowadays have even more. You have maybe two or three months to finish an album. And, and that's where you can rely on technology to make things uh, like the workflow and everything quicker. And the funny fact is about the new album is that we went totally the other way because we had the luxury to record for longer, you know? So, um, and, and especially myself and, 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 you know, the old guys, of course, they, they, they've been there. But for, for me, myself, growing, growing up in the 80s, um, at, at one point, I was starting to collect 80s gear because I love it so much. And uh, I, I like the retro vibe. And, and you know, like, it, even if it's just plain reverbs or stuff that were built in the 80s, they sound magical to my ears. And and it was always a dream um, within Halloween um, to, to combine um, that with the modern technology to go a bit in, into the retro vibe. And with this album, we totally could, you know, like there was Danny who came up with this brilliant idea to record drums on Ingo's drum kit. So, you know, and, and they had this drum kit and then Charlie Baufin find went like, okay, when we're doing this, we should also record on tape, which it would be for me a logical way. And then when we got to, into the guitar recordings, he said, you know, um, I know that you're collecting the stuff and you, and you like this retro gear and, and also Kai and, and, and Vicky and I, we were on the same page when it came to amplifiers and stuff. You know, we, we, we know that we wanted to have a, uh, this German, British um, guitar sound, you know, and, and, we, um, and Kai went back to, to pull out his old uh, Marshall amplifier from the walls of Jericho times and stuff like that happened. And Charlie, when, when we recorded guitars, he went like, bring all your retro gear so we go like the opposite way of what bands nowadays would do. And then in the end, you have to like, now I, have, I can say this because there's a long time passing by and, and now I, I'm realizing that probably this album is pretty won- wonderful, you know? So um, I'm just realizing that um, the combination of everything going the retro way, having a retro vibe on the album, but at the same time making it sound modern worked out just brilliant, you know? So. I'm just happy about that. I agree with that. Um, it it sounds like a modern album with that classic sound. And I was well aware that it was recorded uh, analog. And I said to myself, wait, they, they recorded on tape? It, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and you we know, recorded upon digitally hearing it, too, you know, we, 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 we use both techniques, you know, we've, we've right. been using a lot of analog gear, but also we use the digital work at the same time. And and that worked well, you know, and, and the yeah. good thing about the, the analog recording when you're writing and recording, um, it's all about the moment and the mm-hmm. vibe. And, and what we did is we, we captured the vibe, the energy we had when, when we've been playing. And there are things you can't reproduce, you know, there, yeah. you can't um, repeat stuff um, in the analog world because then you have to do it again. It's a, and it's a, it's a, um, it takes a lot of time to do that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just catch a new moment and it isn't perfect, but that imperfection makes it kind of um, um, special, you know, and, and that's what we went for. Well, I gave it a 10 out of 10 when it comes to sound. So good job on that. Um, but Thanks, knowing that you used um, 
classic instruments. I know that you're endorsed by Dean and Blackstar. I love Dean and yeah. Blackstar. I have yeah. two Blackstar amps myself. Yeah. Um, did you rely on your Dean guitars and Blackstar amps for your sound? Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, in the studio, um, you would use normally a lot of stuff because for me, it's all about the tools and it's it's tools to express yourself. And of course, I would use a certain or, or a, a certain amount of different guitars. Uh, I had a Dean guitars flying V, which I'm using very much, but also I was using several old instruments I already had. There's, for instance, this old Ibanez Destroyer from 1981 or 1982. It's actually the first um, electrical guitar I was ever playing on, and it, it belonged to my uncle who introduced me to to rock guitar playing. So, and I thought like this is like a legendary album we're going to make. This is a very traditional way of recording and i want to re um, introduce these types of instruments for the recordings as well and and the same goes for amplifiers like like th that's the funny thing black star amps are very well known for in, in the heavy metal world yes and <laughs> and 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 actually all i've used them for were, were clean sounds <laughs> this you know that th this <laughs> time like every Every like clean sound I use the Black Star amps for because mm -hmm. I, I just right before the recording I got this little um, Wolf amplifier and it's called HT20. It's a little you know um, head and and I, I got it because I love the clean sound so much. It, 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 it sounded like very over compressed like a, a AC30 when you when you clean it up you know and I, I wanted to have that sound but you know and then and then for everything else we used different we had like an um, like a like a storage full of old marshals and stuff we've we've used because we wanted to go totally 80s you know i with love that talking type of gear song. with musicians it's great <laughs> yeah yeah so and and you know it was in the end of, of the day it was all about the vibe you know because we we finished with the songs we we know um we knew what it's what it's going to be in the studio and what we want to aim or for or what we what what goal we want to achieve and and then like the gear was just the tools that got us there and and you know and and in the end of the day that's that's how the whole band works it's all about emotions and vibes you have a lot of songwriters in the band mm -hmm. you know and even even danny who doesn't write songs he's a music lover you know he's he's a collector for vinyls and 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 even if if he can't write songs he he has a good feeling for what it's good and what's not you know mm -hmm. and 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 halloween is a very emotional driven band so mm -hmm. Um, and that's what we go for. There's no like constructed, we need those type of songs and then we need to do that. And then also a lot of people were asking, wasn't it a big pressure? And uh, for me personally, I, I didn't feel that way. You know, um, um, it was more the surroundings of the band that came up with this pressure thing. But for us, it, like, like always, we just wanted to make a great record. And especially now with the addition of Kai and Michael, um, because as you said before, the band was working already for a long time in a, in a stable lineup and it was a working machinery, you know? And so um, having Kai and, and Michael coming back to the band was just an amazing addition, you know, more possibilities, mm -hmm. more energy. And I, I love that. So um, it's all about the vibe and emotions. I wanted to purposely make sure that I didn't ask the same questions that other interviewers have been asking you. So I was just like, no, no, no. I got to want to make sure I throw not curveballs your way, but definitely yeah. be like, you know, let, let, let me ask him something different than what everyone else is doing. <laughs> so um, you, I'm loving the answers that you're giving me. Thank you so much. Um, you've also brought back another member from a past band of Andy's. You had Dennis Ward of Pink Cream 69 right. uh, working with you on production and mixing. How has it been working with him? Uh, actually, very good because you know that's that's the whole thing these days with Halloween that this is like a big family from the past and from the present. You know, um, Dennis Ward was working with Andy before for a long time before Andy joined Halloween, and then you had Costa Safiri, who is part of our management, um, working with Dennis for a long time in Pink Room Six Nine, and later in Unisonic, where Michael Kisker is the singer of. You know, so you have like this big family coming together in the end you know like we've been touring with kai a, a couple of times you know doing the hellish rock one and two tours and and so it was kind of you if you watching it from the outside you could see it happen you know like it was building up throughout the years that we would kind of connect and reconnect with each other and 
and yeah and now it's just this big family at, at some point we would just sit all together in the in the um in control room um with the producers dennis and and charlie and and um the whole band and we would listen to the demos and everything and it's like a whole family happening listening to music and deciding emotionally what we like and what we don't like you know so and and dennis was there to kind of um structure the chaos the band halloween brings brings in naturally you know because we're 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 pretty chaotic i would say like we're one of the last real rock and roll type of metal bands in the world you know because now, now nowadays like a lot of modern bands they're so like spot on and and on time and you know and 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 everything is on grid you know right. and 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 with with halloween we're still we're, we're still having a lot of old school vibes and and you need we really need a producer to oversee everything and and dennis was there to to guide us a little bit um also musically you know to be there and arrange stuff and say like no 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 don't play this we could do that first you know because otherwise it would have been a, a big chaos and and he's a great musician man it's it's amazing he's a good singer too um mm -hmm. of course a, a great um, bass player but he also can just grab a guitar and go through the chords and so um it was just we wanted to get all the manpower we we can have to have a great album you know and and then also Charlie would normally mix our records. He went like, okay, this time I don't want to mix the record. I want to give it to someone else. And there you had Ronald Prent in, 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 in New York sitting there and mixing the album, which was amazing too, you know? So um, I'm, I'm actually really um, satisfied about the outcome. I know that you bring a whole different level of influence into the band, especially with music that you listen to in your formative years. Um, I mentioned... Uh, Open Your Life is one of my favorite Halloween songs. And I couldn't help but hear a vibe that reminded me of Real Talk, Send Me an Angel. So I said, oh, this guy's bringing in more than just metal to the sound. And I, I really appreciate that about what you do. What I want to ask you is when you were in your formative years being influenced by many artists and genres, how important was it for you to incorporate them into what you do? Or is writing just something that comes uh, has always kind of come naturally for you at this point? Um, you know, um, when, when I was introduced to, um, Halloween, um, I knew what it, the music was about, you know, um, I mean, for me, as I said before, I, I was, um, I'm very much influenced by a lot of different styles and I'm not a heavy metal, um, guitar player or musician per se. I, I wouldn't even say that I'm a, a guitar player, you know, I, I stopped, stopped being a guitar player long before I, I joined the band you know like the guitar is for me just a tool to express myself artistically and but um in halloween and, and that's that's why i liked um the idea of of doing the rabbit don't come easy album like because in the beginning they were like okay we want to do an album and we don't have a, another guitar player and we want to have another guitar player and the chop description was kind of can you write songs it wasn't all about the guitar playing it was more about the songwriting and what we instantly liked uh, from each other because um, Vicky and Andy are pretty much the same. Um, they're so open-minded with music taste, and 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 I, I like that because I'm I'm just, just on the same track there. And a good song is a good song, but also this type of music has bond boundaries in a way. You know, you it it, ha it must have a certain sound, but if you have a good song, you can kind of patch it up to be that way for instance if you take best life on on this record that was a song i was writing on a synthesizer because i'm collecting these old school 80s analog synths you know and i like to play with them and when i'm writing i i just write with any instrument i i, I just get handy you know so handy with so i was writing that riff on a on a synth and i was playing and it was meant to be a synth pop song actually and it wasn't meant wow. for to be a song for Halloween first. So it came naturally. So what I would do is I would play the riff and I would sing. And then I had like the chorus coming up and everything and, and a few lines here and there. And I was, when, when we were about to um, write for the album and, and we had this like date where everybody would meet and play the demos to each other. Um, there's always a little bit of a pressure because you know, there are great songwriters in the band and everybody comes in with ideas. And I went through all my ideas and I was like, okay, this is actually pretty catchy. How can I 
maybe I can translate that to guitar. And so we're starting to do the same thing with guitar and, I, and it worked. And I was singing to that and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to record it. I'm recording the vocals later, but I want to show it to the guys. And then Andy, for instance, he was just going in and he thought, he said, it's sing me the chorus. I want to hear what you have on mine. And I was singing the chorus and he was like, wow, that's actually brilliant. It's, it's such a good song. And that's how, how it went to um, be on the album, you know, because, um, and, and nobody knows that now, now people know, but uh, nobody knew that it was a synth pop song before. Wow. You know? I, uh, I have to say it's one of my favorites on the album. So, um, yeah, to know there's that a it demo version. The... Oh, it yeah, is. There's, okay. There's a, there's, there's, there's a demo version with my vocals on it and it's, it's so, uh, Billy Idol. <laughs> <laughs> it's like well. it has nothing to do with Halloween, but th that's what I wanted to, to express is when when like Danny is going to play the drums on a track, um, and the rest of the guys is playing their instrument on a track. In the end, it's Halloween, yes. and and that's that's what I like about the band that they're very open minded when you come up with song ideas, and it's not heavy metal per se, but they like it. They're just good they songs. Will, they're just great. Yeah, songs. they will. Yeah, so they will kind of you know bring it into that sound it's all about the sound that makes it in the end heavy metal you know yes and but it's, and it's, it's yeah. still halloween and it's still amazing and it's still great songs and that's what matters yeah. that's what i think of this album yeah. it's a cool it's a and for me by the way yeah and for, for me by the way this the singer is giving always the red line there you know like if you hear the singer of a band singing a song um you know what band it is you know yeah Definitely. I know that we're pressed for time, so I just have a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, but again, very grateful that you're giving me this. And I don't uh, mean to sound like I'm rushing. I just I respect the fact that you have other people to meet with, except now he's here and I got him for a couple more minutes. Um, <laughs> I just have to ask, what was it like to have played Rock and Rio in 2019 in front of what looked like 200,000 people? Yeah, crazy, crazy, really crazy. And actually, I have to say that the whole tour that um, we've we didn't plan to go on tour anymore because um, that tour was planned to be White Snake, Scorpions, and Megadeth. So and and Dave Mustaine got sick. So and then they they asked if you want to go on this tour, you know, with these great legendary bands, you know, and 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 Rock and Rio was the last show of of that tour, and it was right before we wanted to go to the studio um, to make this album. And man, I gotta say. It was a magical show for us, really magical. You can watch it on YouTube. It's it's yeah. crazy, you know. We've been in in a very good form. It was it was a lot of fun to be there. And and I have to say, oh, there no blame for the American fans, but I have really to say the Brazilian fans are crazy, <laughs> really. You know, for any band that's touring there, it's it's amazing if you can make it to play in in Brazil because. In Brazil, you have to know, uh, rock music is not dead there, you know, like in a lot of countries, it's kind of suffering because, you know, with of all these styles that come up and, but in Brazil, um, there, we have a lot of young fans in Brazil too, and they're very open-minded to music. And, you know, you would, you would see heavy metal fans standing in the crowd with a Depeche Mode shirt on or so, or so you know, they're like very open-minded and, and, and playing there, it's just amazing. And the hype we just received there, you know, we went, back home and we were so on fire to go to the studio and, and record, you know, because when you're coming off from such a great tour, it's you, you just want to go on. We, for us, it was more or less like, let's do the album so we can go back on tour, you know? Yes. Which and unfortunately, I'll... well, we know what happened, happen. yeah. but I will say this. And I say this as an American, even I think the Brazilian fans are better than us. They put us to shame. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't use the word better. I would just say they're crazy, you know. And they're not, yes. you know. You must you must know a lot of people are, are are very poor there as well, and they would save the money up for tickets, you know. Like in and 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 people in in the states or in Germany too, they're used to get to a show whenever they want, you know. And mm -hmm. and for them, it's obviously. Um, easier to catch a show and 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 they're kind of used to it so uh, and it's, maybe that's the reason why um, they don't get um, freak out when a band is coming there but in, in those countries in, in Latin America especially in, in Latin America people are saving a lot of their hard-earned money um, to to get a ticket and and then when they go to the show they go just nuts you know it's it's crazy well, and that's 
creating a lot of energy, you know. I can promise you that should Halloween return to the United States, especially to to New York where I live, I will buy a ticket and I will go crazy. And yeah, I'm gonna have the time sure of my that. life. <laughs> I'm sure about that. And I'm, but, you uh, know, and, and just to make it clear, I'm not saying that that um, people are not not um, respecting that that bands are coming out or people are not go going crazy or people are not happy no. about seeing a band live I'm, I'm just saying it's if you if you watch any like dvd of any band when they record it somewhere in latin america or you, you just watch shows on youtube you can clearly see um the difference and like if it's just the mentality or whatever and and so i would never say like these fans are better than those no they're there's just no different. better yeah that's no better or worse but but you know as, as you uh, were asking for rock and rio that was just a crazy show you know i i think i would have fit in well with that crowd because i'm not one of those yeah. fans that does this at a concert i oh, yeah, yeah. love to en embrace the music and embrace the yeah. live performance because as nice. a musician i That's respect nice. it too sasha i know you're pressed for time i know you gotta go you have more interviews i just want to say danka shane thank you so much for coming on to my little podcast and yeah. gracing me with a half hour of your time it means the world to me I wish you all the best with Halloween, with the new album, with future tour Thank plans. You, you're you're an awesome musician. And this was a real treat for me. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. All right. You take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Music is Live podcast. If you want to know more about the show, check us out over at musiciesLivepodcast.com. Also, check out our parent network, RatsiReview.com. And check out all the other podcasts there, including our South Park podcast, including our pro wrestling podcast, and including Old Man Metal's Musings, and also the Era Vault and the Parent Show, Ratsa Review. Once again, thank you to Uta from Halloween's Management. Thank you to Sasha from Halloween for being my guest on the show. And I wish you all a great day. And remember, all art is valid. Take care. <laughs>